you know all this. Yeah. You still don't boycott these industries. Yeah. yeah. Tell me why. Maybe this makes me worse than a lot of meat eaters. I'll be going down into the gas. We're going to get Do you eat pork products? Yeah, I do. I've definitely tried to cut my meat intake recently. And my reasons for eating meat are more like a failure of motivation. I think it's impossible to like defend eating meat morally. I just think you could never justify killing an animal just because it tastes good. And maybe this makes me worse than a lot of meat eaters because I believe eating meat's really bad, but I still do it. Do you know anything about pigs? Not a huge amount, about Tom, as much as the next person. Do you think they're smart? I, I don't know, but to be honest, I don't even think that should come into the question of whether we're allowed to eat them. I think okay. even if they're really stupid, I don't, I don't think you could ever justify eat, eating something because it's not smart. Like, okay. I think that makes no sense. I think you could say like, if you had a human whose like brain capacity was completely finished, like you wouldn't be like, oh well, you can eat them now. You eat meat and you said you're, you are conflicted, but if you were to see like free range on a label, say it's RSPCA assured, free range, organic, all the, you know, you look at the label, there's like a happy pig on there, green grass. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say I called it happy bacon. Yeah. Would that, would that influence your decision? No. And even if you were to convincingly tell me that the pig had, instead of being stuck in a really confined space, had wandered around a big field its whole life and been relatively happy, I still, I think that only makes a marginal difference in whether it's okay to eat it. I think you're still making that choice for the pig. You're still, I don't know, I just think, it's the general principle of just killing an animal just because it tastes good. And I think in today's world, that is what it is. Like, we don't need to kill animals like to survive. Um, so the fact that it's free range maybe makes a marginal difference, but yeah, not, not much of one. I still would always buy free range meat, but I don't think it makes it that much better. Okay, and uh, do you know about gas chambers? Uh, yeah, vaguely. Is, does that happen for pigs as well? I knew that happened for chickens, I think. But, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think the experience is like for the pigs? Do you think it's what kind of gas do you think well, they would I'm use? I'm imagining like concentration camp gas chambers. To be fair, I'm... say the RSPCA assure these gas chambers actually with the meat that they put their logos on. Wow. Um, what kind of experience do you think the pigs have in the gas? I assume a very painful one and stressful end of, end of life. But yeah, and I, I mean, why would you assume that? Why would you assume painful? I don't know. I just when I think of people getting gassed to get killed, I don't know. I just imagine it'd be painful. Can I show you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Sure. Yeah, that's horrible. And you can see them, they actually try to escape uh, with their snouts through here. Like, they're trying to get there. It's like industry wide. It's not like, this isn't like the worst of the worst of the pig industry. That's like standard practice. Well, what do you believe it is? I didn't assume that was common. I, I don't imagine that the ways that pigs are killed are particularly humane. Uh, I think, yeah. Killing and humane is hard to put in the same sentence, isn't it? But um, yeah, I'd assume that wasn't common, but I imagine you might tell me it is. Like, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's nearly 90% of pigs in yeah. the UK are gassed. Wow. You said that you don't believe in humane slaughter. No. And why don't you believe in humane slaughter? Uh, I just think killing is inhumane. I think there'd have to be a, re I think it's like, the justification is on explaining why slaughter can be humane instead of explaining why it's not if that makes sense like slaughter is a sort of inherently inhumane thing like if it was going to be humane there'd have to be a reason why and i don't think any of the reasons why people say slaughter is humane are at all convincing yeah i mean like euthanizing your cat or dog if they're suffering and there's nothing else you can do is a humane thing to do true and that's a reason that i'd find acceptable mm -hmm. uh but the reasons for yeah slaughtering pigs are even if it was a reason of um like we have to eat like you're in a situation starving on a desert island or something you had to eat a pig i'd say fair enough maybe that's the reason it's like still like i guess morally dubious but i'd accept that but i think in today's society especially in like first world countries especially now there's like a big range of meat like meat alternatives and stuff i don't think you could come up with a human a justifying reason for humane slaughter that would be convincing i don't know so you know all this yeah you still don't boycott these industries. Yeah. Tell me why. Yeah, and I think that's a huge moral failure on my part, to be honest. And um, yeah, that's, yeah, there's just a motivation gap. It's like, and it's it's something really appalling. I can see that video of the pigs. And to be fair, that hopefully was a step in the right direction. I think an important thing for limiting motivation is making it less impersonal. Because I think a big thing is you eat a burger and you don't even think about the fact that it's an animal. I don't know. It's just something really weird how. There's just a disconnect between what you might believe is acceptable and then what you 
actually do anyway. I think it's as simple as I've grown up eating meat and the food that tastes good is the food with meat. And that is so unacceptable. That is not a moral argument. That is so like, um, for some reason when it comes down to it, when I'm just like ordering food or something, it will just be like, cause yeah, I don't cook with meat, but when I eat out, which I do sometimes, I'd normally do eat meat. Um, so somehow it comes down to just monkey brain turns on and it's like, oh, I want the food that tastes good. Not like, I want to be moral. So let me ask you this. So like you say, uh, let me say, like if there was um, a really convenient um, dog meat stand right here mm -hmm. and it was a little cheaper, and then a little bit further down the road was a pig meat uh, sandwich shop, mm -hmm. which was a little bit more expensive, a little bit more inconvenient. Mm -hmm. um, would you go for the dog meat? If I was being morally consistent, I'd have to, yeah. But I probably wouldn't be. But, but yeah. why, why wouldn't you eat the dog meat? Tell me. All it is is... I like dogs better because I've seen them and they're cute. Again, like not a moral argument, it sounds silly, but that is as simple as it is. That's monkey brain switches on, doesn't it? So, so let me just yeah. say to you like this, like, like you said uh, your motivation is off. Like you know that the, those two stalls, the dog stall and the pig mm -hmm. stall cause killing and pox, probably suffering to those animals before they're killed mm -hmm. and decapitated and chopped up into pieces and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a little bit further up, it's a little more inconvenient, but it's a, it's a it's a vegan stand and it's got the vegan burgers, it's got the vegan bacon sandwich, you yeah. all these uh, kinds of products that are like mimicked by the plant so you're not, you're not losing on taste. Maybe it's not, maybe there's a little bit of a transition period. Would you go a little bit further and grab that one? Yeah, I actually would. Probably not always, but I often would. I do like try to eat a lot of vegan food, especially if it was like vegan burgers and stuff. I think it's weird and annoying that there's something in me that is just that most meals I want to have meat in them, but I think meat alternatives I do find absolutely fine. I think what's helpful in cutting down on meat is the fact that those are becoming, you know, more common. So I think if there was a vegan stand as well, yeah, I might well, but I wouldn't definitely. It would probably come down to what was on the menu and it would be some arbitrary decision like, oh, this pork or dog burger sounds nice in the vegan one. Let me, honest, I don't know. Let me ask but, you this, like, you understand no, supply and demand, yeah. like, like yeah. when you, when you, when you create, create a demand for something, you, mm -hmm. you increase the supply chain yeah. of things, things happening. And with, with the meat industry, it's really, it's really direct, actually. Do you think it's direct? Because I've often thought about that. Uh, and that's almost a barrier to motivation is like, oh, if I don't buy this pack of chicken, is it actually going to equate to less chickens getting killed? And I know it's a stupid way of thinking and it's selfish because if everyone thought like that, loads of more chickens would get killed. But um, I sometimes think like, uh, yeah, just as one person, I just can't do enough. Unless I was going to go and promote activism and stuff. You say one person, they can't make a difference. Mm. What if 10 million people say I can't make a difference? Of course, yeah, and that's absolutely true. Uh, and that is true in theory. I think sometimes I tell myself, well, actually I don't have the power to influence 10 million people. And sure, I could act as part of a wider whole, but sometimes I just, it just feels a bit hopeless that. But you would still avoid the dog meat stand, even if all of these things were I the same. I would. I've said to people in the past, and this conversation makes people uncomfortable, I said to my friend who has a dog, uh, that like, I don't see eating dogs as morally uh, distinct from eating other animals that are more commonly okay. eaten. Um, if the dog was, still, let, let me just, yeah. so I've disconnected you from the dog actually yeah. by saying dog meat stand, because she's saying disconnect is a big thing. Yeah, yeah. There's a dog there, yeah, yeah. they cut the head off of the dog in front of you. Yeah, that would 100% stop me, and that would stop me for the pig as well. But then it's like, why would that stop me, but you show me that video not stop me from eating bacon again, which I probably will at some point. I like to think I'll cut down eventually. I always say I'm going to be certainly a vegetarian, if not a vegan, in the long term. Um, There's a disconnect. This disconnect thing is why people can go ahead and contribute to something that's so horrible and they're so morally against yeah, yeah, yeah. and they just pick it up and there's it's in a package it might be in yeah. a sandwich already nice. yeah, yeah. so i think the disconnect is where we're at exactly like yeah i think like you said while well, you were talking about in a different context of having a label with a pig on it and it was a happy pig but um meat packaging is so like separate from it being an animal it just seems like a snack like yeah a food yeah um but yeah the disconnect is just a huge a huge problem and it's yeah it just I don't know, I think there's something like um, sort of bystander syndrome, if that's what it's called, where like, and this is stupid, I'm not saying it's at all defensible, it's just fortunately the way I think of it sometimes, is um, everyone else eats meat, so like, what am I gonna do? And that's obviously, like you could say the same about people who are around in like times of slavery, that wouldn't make it okay. Like, um, there's plenty of social norms that are unacceptable, but like, yeah, so it's not a good reason, but it's just, I think the real problem for me is that like, I have strong beliefs about 
all these things like moral issues, but for some reason it doesn't equate to action. When it comes down to it, I think a lot of people just don't care about being moral. I think that's a real problem. I think, I don't know, I just need to figure out more ways to like, if, care if, about being moral. If, the, right. if these people are in the animal's position, it's a much different story, isn't it? If these people are in the animal's position. Yeah, the ones that don't care about being moral. If they're, if they are in an alternate universe in the animal's position, they yeah. would care quite a lot, eh? Of course. Yeah, yeah. And course. you would care quite a lot if you were about to be gassed. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, almost like exemplify my disconnect. I um, I did a philosophy degree a few years ago, and I once wrote an essay passionately, yeah, passionately defending like ethical vegetarianism. And I basically just talked about this um, analogy where like, because uh, it was all about the rationality argument. And I just said, imagine like there was, because animals are only less rational than us. Maybe they're not, according to you, but it seemed like a lot of studies that they were. But um, I basically said, if there was a race that was more rational than us, that wouldn't, we wouldn't be like, oh, fair enough, fair enough to eat us then. Does that make oh, sense? Oh yeah, so I've basically gone, what you're saying, no, no, you're basically saying if there was a, if there was an alien race yeah. that came down to earth and they were on another level of exactly. intelligence we to us. Tiny compared to them. I don't think that would make us allowed to eat them, like, yeah. Mm. Sorry, yeah. them allowed to eat us. Yeah, like, let's just say you, you bridge that gap the same distance from us two pigs or chickens mm -hmm. to these alien race and us. Yeah. And they use the same justifications to raise and kill us yeah, for food. Yeah. And uh, that wouldn't be... Uh, then, yeah, and I think that message could actually weirdly get to people because then you think, as a human, you know that you have feelings and stuff. It might alert you to the fact that, like, yeah, just because pigs are at least perceived as less feeling than us doesn't mean they're not feeling at all and doesn't mean that that means their feelings are any at all like um insignificant well you know i just want to empower you i want to say that you do have actually power in what yeah. you do in your yeah, life yeah. it does ripple out like yeah. you can make a difference yeah. like if i had your attitude i wouldn't have made a difference in thousands of people's lives like it, even you speaking to people and leading by example makes a difference in this moral universe so i don't want you to feel helpless and you know like you know all these things and the worst thing is knowing something and not taking any action because he, I, I want you to just take that step and like do something because it will be very empowering for you and it, you won't yeah. have that feeling of cognitive dissonance and that uncomfortable feeling is like I could do more you know I, I you know I know what's wrong like and then when you align your actions with your morals you feel a lot more empowered by that yeah yeah it's true it's true and I would really like to I I always think hopefully I don't know I'm just I'm still quite young and quite disorganized I'm like very bad at like cooking consistently and stuff. And I always think uh, eating, especially vegan, you kind of have to have your life together a bit. You know what I mean? You have to know how to cook for sure. And it is kind of like, um, I've gotten into Huel recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know because Huel. it's actually just a really good way of, like the Grabbing veganism a is, a, of, it is a big bonus. And I think, I don't know, just living and cooking easily tends to be living and cooking with meat. Once you get started, man, like you can tackle these convenience factors. You can do it quickly. You yeah. can find uh, food on the go. You can use apps like Happy Cow. You can For find sure. Happy uh, Cow, uh, it, what, vegan it's a it's an app that shows you where there's vegan options around. Yeah. And once you know these things, it's actually like second nature. So you, I, don't, I do it without thinking now. Like it's not yeah. an inconvenience nice, nice. to us at all to, exactly. to eat like this. And, and yeah, I really think like all the things I've just said are like, I fully accept that they're like not just a big no, no, I know. I don't, I've never got that vibe that you're trying to justify anything. Yeah. You're very honest about these things. Yeah. But you know, this this indifference, this disconnect and indifference, mm. and this is why atrocities can happen. Agreed. Yeah. Because people stand by, they do nothing, they allow it to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all atrocities are like this when you have, you know, m the masses just turning a blind eye and allowing it to, and the, the world will never change like that. And I just think if we were, as soon as we're on the receiving end of being victimized. We understand what it's like, but from the oppressor or from the disconnected person just walking through life's point of view, it doesn't matter to them. So why I get involved, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I've never been like that myself. Nice. And um, yeah. you know all the right things, but I just take some action and align yourself and I think. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was interested to ask, like, have you ever experienced like that lack of motivation, that disconnect originally, like when you first got into- oh, Well, dude, I was uh, actually a gang member. I was on drugs. I was right. uh, doing nothing to help anyone. I was actually yeah. harming people and I didn't care too much about animals. I did, if I seen some overt cruelty, I would yeah. jump in, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I mean, I mean, at 20, from 20 to 27, I was, you know, running through life as a, you know, from my whole life actually, until the last 10 years I've been a vegan and I've been an activist and I've been making changes yeah, and yeah. been helping people making the connection. So yeah. I'm not perfect and I never have been. I've actually been probably a lot more of a menace than you have. But I learned that violence is not the answer. And I learned that, I learned it from being a, both a victim and an, 
and a victimizer yeah. in the gang world and things like this. Uh, what it's like on both ends of the like spectrum and like I feel like animals are so innocent they did nothing wrong to anyone 100%. we're only yeah. doing it to eat them mm. we're not doing it to like save humanity or something like yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's one of the greatest moral crimes of humanity yeah, actually. yeah agreed agreed but yeah I think a barrier to motivation sometimes is like it's just such a cultural thing and sometimes it feels like yeah I guess I'm just being worse than before but because it needs to change on like a cultural level you do sometimes feel powerless to change it on an individual level. But yeah, like to change it on a cultural level, you just need loads of people changing as individuals, don't you? So you can influence culture. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Individuals have influenced culture before. Yeah, true. true. In history. Yeah. Like this has happened. Yeah, Small yeah. groups of people can change the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, we have evidence for that in yeah. history. So don't feel helpless. Like you could be part of something really big and be part of change and nice. you know, and yeah, you never know. Yeah, yeah. And I I I know I sometimes think there's like a whole like, I like to think that I'll be a vegetarian, if not a vegan, at some point. But I think there's a whole segment of society that just doesn't care at all. So, like, I do worry that, like, I sometimes think, like, that changed the culture. Even if you change, like, all the people who might change their minds, I still just genuinely think, like, so many people, at least in the UK, um, it seems like they just never would. You can change laws like that, though. Yeah, I guess, yeah. And once change. laws are in place, yeah. then animals have rights and yeah. you can stop these things from happening. Yeah, for sure. Once they're just, protected properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems so far off with, like... Tories now, but yeah, but yeah, can happen one day. True. Yeah. I'm not gonna argue with you there, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheers, yeah, brother. Chat to you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much. Nah, Appreciate nah. that. Take care. Yeah. You too. And look up the Happy Cow app. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. No worries, brother. See you, mate. Bit.